as Pastor Stephanie was praying, enemy works on what we forget or what we don't know. What we forget or what we don't know. And so the Holy Spirit is there to remind us. Amen. Listen, we are there for one another to remind each other. Praise God. Yeah, yeah. We don't allow one another to to uh, to to fall. We don't allow one another to um, to be sad. <laughs> we remind each other of the promises. Praise God. There was one other time of worship that touched me today, and it's just an excerpt. And it's it was Todd Delaney that was uh, he was doing a live recording, and I felt the presence of God so powerfully. You know what? I can't even play it because I hit record, but you know what? I'm going to pause recording. Yeah. So he keeps our mind in perfect peace when it is stayed on him. He keeps us in perfect peace when our mind is stayed on him. And so we got to remember that at all times. Amen. And especially Stephanie was praying, the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. It might not make no sense to nobody. Praise God. But one word from God, just one word from God, if it won't work, if you just utter that out of your mouth, I don't care what you're up against, just say it ain't going to work. <laughs> the only thing working for me is this word. Only thing working in me is this Holy Spirit. I have joy. I have peace. I operate in love. Glory to God. I am healthy, I am wealthy, I am strong in the Lord, and in the power of his might. Is that okay? Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Know that the kingdom of God is voice activated. We got to confess with our mouth what we believe in our heart. I don't know, sometimes you might need to walk around your house and just talk to yourself. You're really not talking to yourself, you're really speaking to the atmosphere. You're letting everything around you, everything in hell, around hell, anything that show up, come to the doorstep, praise God, just saturated with the word of God and the promises of God over your life. Amen. Uh, so it's already a resistance. I call it a force field. Your salvation is like a bulwark to a city. It's like walls to a city. Praise God. Yes, it is. Amen. And your weaponry is, that's the sword of the spirit. That's the word of God. Okay. Uh, listen, we're, we, we are a peculiar people. A chosen generation of peculiar people. All right. You to walk around declaring the word of God over your life. You're speaking it into the atmosphere. You don't know uh, what you're doing. But I can tell you this, you're creating your world. That's what you're doing. You're creating your world. You're creating your environment. You're creating your atmosphere. Okay. And you want your atmosphere conducive for the promise of God to operate in you and to you and through you. Is that good? Amen. When the world without, when the earth was without form and void, God spoke. Let there be light and there was light. Okay. And so that's what you do in your world. When you're not seeing what you need to see, what you need to do is speak the word of God over your life in the atmosphere. Are we getting that? Come on, y'all. We're here to, to grow and to learn and to think. And uh, you might have some questions. You might have some comments. What I'm sensing and I'm discerning is there's a lot of, there's a lot of warfare, amen, that is, that is going on. Amen. And we want to address it. We want to address it with the word of God. We want to address it. Amen. In the exponential way that we can as wordites. If one can set a thousand to flight, then two can set 10,000 to flight. Is that good? Come on. We're fitly joined together. Ain't that right, Pastor Sam? We're fitly joined together. You mess with one of us, you've messed with all of us. Well, all right. We'll put the word to work. Come on, we'll plead the blood of Jesus. Don't have us pray in the realm of the spirit and rise above and look down, mother, and receive what's really going on. Mm -hmm. Then step back into this earth realm and deal with it. Come on, are we good? 
Amen. I want y'all to know that when you're praying in the spirit, when you're going in the secret place, you're getting the secrets, you're getting the ammunition, you're getting the advantage to come back in this earth realm and deal with it. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is, is it's already dealt with. God just needs you to be his voice. He just needs you to be his, 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 his deliverer. He needs you to, to be his representative, his ambassador in the earth realm. You are ambassadors of Christ. Is that good? You represent the Father, amen, in the earth realm. Is that good? Mm -hmm. And some things that ain't even about you is about what the Father needs to get done. Mm -hmm. He'll send you right in the midst of chaos because he just wants peace in the place. And he needs an ambassador to show up, amen, to declare peace. Speak to the mountain, command it to be thou removed. Is that good? Come on now. Mom, he got you on your block, so your block will be good. It'll be glorified. The glory of God can be revealed. Just go outside and just stand in the yard and just declare the word of the Lord. Just let it ring out in the atmosphere. Don't you shut your mouth now. Don't shut your mouth. Don't you close your mouth. Y'all talk to me now. Christian Dom is not boring. Somebody say it's time to have some fun. <laughs> I know you've been on defense all your life because you didn't know how to fight. <laughs> when you know how to fight, you can be scary. <laughs> always, always, you know, afraid of what's going to show up, what's going to pop up. Hello, but now that you're an ambassador of Christ, he sends you into places. He sends you right in the midst of trouble and tell you to speak. Are we good? Yeah, you got secret forces, special forces. Can y'all comprehend that? All things are working together for our good. Is that people might know God. Come on, that they might know God. That's all. And the only one that can help people know God is people that know God. See, people that know God can't help nobody know God. Only way trans lives get transformed is through transformed lives. Mm -hmm. That's exciting to me. That's exciting. That's why I tell you 21st century evangelism is going to look different to you. You be like, man, why, why in the world? Because mm -mm -mm, he wants their life transformed. That's why. It don't make sense to everybody else, but it makes sense to him. Can he trust you? Can he give you an assignment? Come on, Dean, tell your mic was open. <laughs> Y'all smile. I, and I was just thinking, Bishop, you know, what all you were saying, you know, we got to walk in confidence. Oh, my. We got to walk in confidence. We got to know who we are. I mean, we got to have a mind frame. The words you were saying, we got to think that way in order to order to do these things our mind must be renewed mm. God. if it be renewed by the word of god we're going to be doers of the word not just hearers only we're okay. going to do what the word said do he said no weapon form against us shall prosper we got to know that mm -hmm. confident in that when we mm -hmm. live in i know you saying warfare it's real it doesn't mm -hmm. change but i'm still got peace i still got peace and, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna continue. Yeah. I mean, what it takes to continue. You got to pray in the Holy Ghost. We've been, <laughs> we've been, you got to, I mean, this ain't no start and stopping. You, you, I mean, it's a continue. When God, when you said pray in the Holy Ghost, it's a daily thing that we're gonna have to do in order to continue, especially the warfare. We're in a season of warfare now. You sure enough go have to pray in the Holy Ghost. You you can't be skipping, you know. Or <laughs> you know I mean, you get stopping the star, and you might get stuck. Uh oh. We go have to continue in the Holy Spirit. That's that's what that's what that's what been been coming to me. You know, anytime some show up, I got to continue. This is good, and and it's a stretch because we've been used to being on our on our heels. You know, just kind of. 
kind of real passive and just kind of taking what go on. But when you know the promise, you know, you got to go after the promises now. You got to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. No more it is what it is. Mm -mm, it's what I say it's going to be. Mm -hmm, it's what he said it's going to be. I have, I can have what he says I can have. I am who he said I can be, and I can do what he said I can do. Is that good? Come on, clap your hands right there. That's good news. That's good news. And so that's going to stretch you. But the stretch is when you have to pray through because otherwise you don't have the capacity to get to what's ordained for you. You're going to have to pray through. You're going to have to pray through this. And I'm not talking about my religious prayers. I'm talking about, praise God, that the presence of God comes on you. And you know in the midst of you praying, transformation that took place. Mm -hmm. You ain't just showing up at five in the morning just going through the ritual. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He met you in that place. And he might tell you, meet me at 4.30 in the morning. Come on. And then if you show up at five, he already been there. But you know what's ordained for you. And you'd be like, mm, he said 430. Let me get myself in the 430. It's going to stretch you because you already think you can't do it. You already thought five was early. And he said, no, we're going to do 430 today. <laughs> Am I talking good to y'all? I'm trying to tell you to stretch. Because you think you can't do no more. He said, I'm enlarging your territory. I'm expanding your capacity. You don't tell me what you can and what you can't do. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I made you. I created you. You my container. Let me stretch you and enlarge your capacity. Hmm? Come on. We call to city to city, state to state, nation to nation. You can't even handle your household. He said, I got to give you some more capacity. You just roll down. Just roll down. Hmm? You go to work for eight hours and you just roll out. Hmm? Just roll out. <laughs> Ooh, he said, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta expand your capacity. Y'all talk to me now. Talk to me. Cause the whole thing is the enemy don't want the work of the ministry to go for. That's what he don't want. He doesn't want any evangelism to happen. He doesn't want us to make God known to those who don't know him. Because if they ever come to know him, they ever get to experience the power of his resurrection, there's no turning back. Come on, come on now. There's no turning back. You know how you were. You didn't taste it. And now you ain't going back. You ain't going back to that hog slop. You ain't going back. Miss Deborah, are you going back? You ain't going back to that. I might not know what I'm going to do, but I ain't going back to that. I might grow weary and well doing, but I ain't going back to that. I might cry a little while, but I ain't going back to that. Hmm? And the next thing you know, some groan come up out of you, some moan come up out of you that you ain't never heard before, and all of a sudden, I'm back. I mean, I am back. I'm back. Here I am, Lord. I'm back. I hear in the realm of the spirit. Some of you need to holler. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I've been. I've been a little, little stagnant, but I'm back. I'm back. Mm -hmm. Been a little distracted, but I'm back. Hmm. I am back. Hmm? Increase my faith. Enlarge my territory. Clarify my assignment. <laughs> yeah.
And Lord, forgive me for my absence. <laughs> and yes, I will be there at 430 in the morning. Bright eyed and bushy tailed. Come on. Now, I got to tell you something. You show up the first day and you be like, I, I don't feel nothing. Come back the next day. Because he want to check your heart now. And if you lay there, amen, from 4.30 to 5.30 and don't hear nothing. He just checking your heart. That's all. Glory, glory, glory. Hmm? Then on the third day, <laughs> on the third day, Pastor Samantha, 4.30 in the morning, you pop them eyes open and the Holy Ghost meet you right there. Hmm? You start getting answers, understanding. Your strength be renewed. Body get healed. Come on. Peace come on you. Mm -hmm. Clarity comes to you. God started expressing the love towards you to where he even gives you an understanding of what's really going on. He don't have to because he's God. Come on, Pastor Sam, your mic was open. Okay, I'm ready now. This, as you was speaking, I heard this. The purpose of the stretching is to transform you, to equip you for the next. We are in the middle of the move now, but he, the stretching is about equipping you for the next move. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, today. So we must continue. Yeah, you got to continue. You have to continue. It's called diligence. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hmm? He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews 11 and 6. For them that come to God must believe that he is. Is what? You everything I need you to be when I need you to be. You my peace. You my joy. You're my strength. You're my, my, my protector. You're my provider. You're my healer. Come on now. You everything to me. You're my savior. Come on. You're everything to me. Hmm? And you are a reward of them that diligently seek you. That's why there's any lack in you is to cause diligence in you, not for you to suffer. It is not for you to suffer. It's to, to call up the diligence in you. Come on. You everything I need you to be when I need you to be. You are my healer. Come on. And I'm not turning you loose till you bless me. Hmm? 430 in the morning, I'm here again. I'm here again, Jehovah Rapha. Come on, Akadabasa. Cause the time can cause you to not believe any longer. The enemy knows just to wait you out. Cause you're gonna stop showing up. And you're gonna stop confessing. <laughs> Come on.
So whenever you find lack, it's not to punish you. It's not for you to, to accept that or receive that. It's to require or put a demand on diligence in your life. That is all. For he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And we got to be mature enough to say, you know what? I hadn't been diligent. Oh, my. You see, the next, Pastor Samantha, this next level, this next promotion, this next dimension will require a greater level of discipline. A greater level of diligence. <laughs> Are we good? Mm -hmm. It'll begin confronting everything that opposes you, even if it's you. Stinking thinking, religion, come on out, lack of faith. Are we good? Listen, you don't understand how significant you are. You don't know your worth, how valuable you are to me. And before I formed thee, I knew you. And I had a purpose for you. Come on now. I got a plan for you. I declared an end for you. But you're going to have to pray through in order to get to. Come on. Because I, I, I desire your company. I want your relationship. I want you to commune with me. I want us to become one. Come on now. That was Jesus' prayer that, he, that we will become one just as he and his father was one. Woo wee. That's what John 15 talks about abiding in me and my word abiding in you. So you can ask what you will. Come on now. And it'll be given unto you. God wants to come to the place that when you open your mouth, it's not filtered through us. When you open your mouth, it's as though God has opened his mouth. Come on. Your mind has been so renewed. Let that mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. That you have such the mind of Christ that when you talk, you talk like God talks. You think like God thinks. You move like God moves. Your perspective on things is like God's perspective. Is anything too hard for God? You be like, it ain't too nothing too hard for God. Hmm? That's when you, that's when that's when the Holy Spirit can stir up the gift of the working of miracles. And that's when signs and wonders begin to follow those who believe. Because you think like God thinks now. When you see something, you're not overwhelmed. You're not afraid. Come on. Your, your mind will be like, all I got to do is say something. All I got to do is speak to it. All I got to do is lay my hands on it. All I got to do is... Hallelujah. Oh, he's, he's, he's enlarging your capacity. Your ability to contain him. Your faith is increasing. Say my faith is increasing, even right now in Jesus' name. My faith is increasing. I believe you, God, more than I've ever believed you before in my life. Those are the types of things you got to say on your mouth. You got to say, my faith is increasing. 
And the fact that I'm in faith is that's why I'm up at 430, because I believe you. <laughs> See, people that don't have faith don't pray. They won't go on the rooftop. <laughs> huh? They won't meet God somewhere. He tell them to meet him. Because they lack faith. Come on, y'all talk back to me. We're going to get on page 43 of this book in just a moment. So my capacity is expanding. I'm becoming more and more a container for God. Okay. Like Pastor Sam, it's a stretch. He has to stretch us. This is going to require your prayer life going to another level. This is going to require you communing with God in a way. It's going to require you to pray in the Holy Ghost. Hmm. You have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying unto his church. This is the high calling. Somebody say, this is the high calling. Mm -hmm. This is the high calling. which is in Christ Jesus, the Christos, the anointing, the anointed one. Any questions, any comments, y'all come on. Bishop, I also heard this as you was talking. Uh, talking about the warfare. The warfare is an indicator that we are in the uncomfortable stretching, which means that we have been marked for the next. So that, that just makes you think about something right there. Yeah. That even though you're in the midst of an uncomfortable stretching, but God is trying to change your view about when you are going through an uncomfortable stretch. You it's, it's an indicator that you've been marked. So think about people that not don't it's not being bothered. They they're not you no know, stretching. There's no uncomfortable situation going on. They haven't been marked but next. Mm. But you've been handpicked. You've mm -hmm. been chosen to go to the next. There's two things that's going to birth you into a new season of prayer, love or, or pain. Amen. Mm. My God today. When your capacity to love increases, you ain't willing to allow people to suffer needlessly. So you'll go to God for some answers. You'll, 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 you'll want the increase of your anointing. You'll want spiritual gifts working on the inside. You'll want to have the word of the Lord hid in your heart. You'll, you'll want to be able to be patient and, and show mercy, mercy and kindness to people. And, 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 and you'll take out time. You'll, you'll, you'll make sacrifices when love increases. Come on now. Uh, when, 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 the, when the love for a wife increases on a husband, he'll quit being critical of that wife and he'll start praying for her. Oh, come on, same thing with a wife. A wife will stop being critical of her husband and begin to pray for her. Same thing for a child. Amen. When your love increases, you will pray for that child. Amen. Glory to God. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Come on. We got to stop all this phileo love and we got to get to the uh, agape love of God, the love that will cause you to go to the source, the creator of life, to get to solutions to the problems of life. 
Come on now. Love or pain will birth you into a new season of prayer. Mm-hmm. Well, ask Jesus in the garden. He went to the garden because of love. But that pain birthed into a new season of prayer. Mm-hmm. And listen, you got to understand something. Peace is not the absence of trouble. But in the midst of trouble, you'll have perfect peace. Let me tell you something. When we were coming from Africa, man, we hit, we were at about 32,000 uh, uh, feet in the air. And that big old plane, listen to me, listen to me. It's 12 seats across. That's how big that plane is. Okay. No, it's 10 seats across. Four in the middle, three on, on both sides. And I can't tell you how many rows is in this thing. Big old plane. And that plane got the rocking and rolling and dipping and dabbing. And the pilot came with us and says, I'm about to elevate to about 42,000 feet. And when he went up through that turbulence, that plane shook a little bit. And it took, but you heard him crank them in this up a little bit more. And he rose up out of that in glory. And when he got up out of there, and he rolls up above the turbulence. It was smooth sailing. He said, we're going to cruise right here. We're going to cruise at about 42,000 feet in the air. And I'm going to get y'all to y'all destination. You see, that's what happens when, when trouble hits. When you pray, you're going to elevate. You ain't going ain't gonna to conform. You're not going to go down. Mm -mm. You're going to rise up above it. Mm-hmm. And what happens is when he teaches you, you can teach somebody else. Girl, we ain't going to whine. We about to worship. Mm -mm, we're going to cover all that whine and we about to worship. We about to rise above this thing. We about to get what we need to get. Come on, so we can live how we supposed to live. Come on, and when he teaches me, I'm going to be able to teach somebody else. See, God got to be able to trust you with trouble. Because if he can't hurt you, he can't use you. Uh-oh. And if it hurts you and you give up on everything that he sold in you, he said, I can't trust you. Hmm? That's what the Holy Spirit is there for. When you don't know how to pray, this is page 43 on our book. Come on now, T -t tongues of fire. When you don't know what to pray, Paul offered this in Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. For we do not know what to pray for as we are, but the Spirit himself. Come on now. You see, the Word of God tells you that he's our personal intercessor. Jesus, as a matter of fact, is sitting at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. But him interceding for us on the outside, when he sent you a comforter, one that dwells with you on the inside, that will begin, come on here, making what's on the inside of you line up with the one that's at the seat at the right hand of the Father that gave his life for you, line up with the purpose and the intent in which he died. That you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. Somebody, when I learn how to live this thing, I cannot lose. I have overcome this world because of Christ. I am more than a conqueror. Now, what has to happen is you got to stay dwelling in the secret place because there's so many people around you, amen, that just settle. They just settle. They just go with the flow. They just, you know. It's going to be all right by and by. I ain't going to have to go through this one day. <laughs> Y'all okay? When he says, is there anybody going to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God? And when your capacity of love increases, 
you stop liking or, or being okay with people around you suffering. That's going to cause you, come on now, to do what this is saying to us on page 43. When I don't know what to pray for, when I can't do anything about it, I'm not going to just say, oh, well. I'm not just going to turn my head. I'm not just going to come in agreement with it. I'm about to pray. Now, the Holy Spirit to pray for me so that I can get the solution, so I can get the answer, so that I can get the grace, so that I can get the anointing. Hmm? The next verse says, we, uh, chapters, I mean, paragraph says, we may think we know how to pray, and sometimes we do, but many times we don't have a clue what prayer at what prayer answer we really need. If the Holy Spirit tells us how to pray, we can pray effectively. Somebody say effectively. Let me tell you why a lot of people get, get frustrated with prayer because they don't know how to pray effectively. Because when you see prayer is our secret weapon, when you see how effective prayer is, You'll love it. It'll be your go-to. Come on, I said it'll be your go-to. Scripture says that the Lord is our is our strong tower, and the righteous run into Him and there say, "That's what prayer does. Prayer allows you to go into your strong tower." Prayer takes you into the secret place. Prayer takes you into a conference with the all-wise God. Prayer takes you into a conference, into to a place of communing with the one that created everything. Without him, wasn't nothing created. Or he can say, you know what? <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just reconfigure some things. I'll just do a creative miracle. I'll just replace that. I'll just. But you won't ever find that out unless you get into the secret place. You okay? Someone say, and you know that all things are working together for good. When they love God or the call according to this is working together for my good. I'm going to dwell in this secret place. Come on now. I'm going to press toward the mark of the prize of this high calling of God. God's trying to show me something. Come on now. God's trying to, to develop something in me. God's trying to enlarge my territory. God's trying to expand my capacity. This is good. <laughs> if the Holy Spirit tells us how to pray, we can pray effectively in our natural language. If we have a, a promise from God in the word, we can apply it through prayer to a situation. However, if you are not getting prayer answers, consider what James 4, 3 says about asking amiss. The Greek word for miss in the context of this scripture means improperly. Improperly or wrongly. If you are praying wrongly, you won't get the right answers or perhaps any answer. Hmm. Y'all good? I like the Passion Translation of Romans 8.26. It says, in a similar way, the Holy Spirit takes hold of us in our human frailty to empower us in our weakness. For example, at times we don't even know how to pray or know the best things to ask for, but the Holy Spirit rises up within us to super intercede on our behalf, pleading to God with emotional sighs too deep for words. The message translation puts it this way. If we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't matter. He does our praying in and for us, making prayer out of our wordless sighs, our aching groans. 
He knows us far better than we know ourselves, knows our pregnant, our pregnant condition, and keeps us present before God. That's why we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of, of love for God is worked into something good. It's worked into something good. Do you know the only way you're going to birth, amen, the will of God in your life is through prayer? That's how vision gets birthed is through prayer. That's how the will of God for your life manifests itself through prayer. Jude 20 tells us that when we pray in the Holy Spirit, it builds up our most holy faith. Don't think you're going to get to the will of God not being conformed to the image of his son. Because that's every man's greater purpose. He wanted to become the firstborn amongst many brothers, Romans 8, 29. And, 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 and God called us so that we could be conformed to the image of his son. We got that? So somebody say, listen to me. Everything is about me being conformed into his image and in his likeness. That's what this is all about. Me becoming more like him. Hmm. Mm hmm. That's what it's all about. Us being conformed to the image of his son. Okay. Barbara, you had your hand up. Stephanie, you got your mic open too. Yes, sir. Um, I was going to say when you said that the spirit takes over and prays for us, I know sometimes when I'm praying, I just make silly sounds, stupid stuff, and I don't understand it. Is that are you saying that's when the spirit takes over and is interceding for you? Exactly. That's what the word of God says. He groans and moans that we could not utter. It don't make no sense to us. Okay, thank you. I, I, I've done that several times and I didn't know, but I see now that's what that is. Okay. Yeah, and don't and don't quench that. Don't quench that because it don't sound right to you. Don't quench that. That's the super supernatural praying for you, which can do things for you that you cannot do on your own. Okay. So don't quench it. Don't quench it. Allow him to, to make intercession for you. That's many times when we're going through a place of deliverance. Even a place of healing. A place of restoration. Okay. Sometimes you broken and you don't know it. He's putting us back together again. Come on, when the Holy Ghost put us back together, it's better than monkey glue, super glue, any type of glue. I mentioned mon monkey glue, y'all, because that's one of my commercials. I love that commercial, Mr. Depper, that monkey glue commercial. They be coming up with some stuff, boy. <laughs> but it's better than monkey glue, super glue, any type of glue when the Holy Ghost puts you back together. Come on now. Hmm? And let me tell you something. There's some places you've been broken and you don't even know you're broken. But those places have you paralyzed. Sometimes fearful. Sometimes, listen, unresponsive. Ah. <sighs> And in those times, Sister Barbara, when, when, when that, those things are happening, Holy Ghost are doing things we don't even know. We don't know nothing about. But I can tell you this, it's good for us. Somebody say, it's good for me. And once you realize how good it is for you, you'll yield yourself more and more to it. Come on, you arise early in the morning for that ministry. Mm-hmm. 
all throughout the day. Anytime he wants to pray for you, you will allow him. You can be driving in your car and all of a sudden uh, the, the Holy Spirit just wants to pray for you. And you just, da, 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 and just yield and just let him pray for you. It's called an unction. Your unction to allow the Holy Spirit to pray for you. Sometimes it's for you. Sometimes it's for somebody else. Sometimes it's for what you're about to walk into. Are we good? Stephanie, come on. I was just going to say, um, you really kind of hit it. When we, this prayer that you were talking about and praying in the Holy Spirit, when we don't know what to pray for, and then when we do pray in the Holy Spirit, and like Mother Barbara said, it may sound stupid to us. Um, that's one of those voices that you got to eliminate. And so making sure that we eliminate other voices because you say, he that have an ear, let him hear. And so when we're hearing the spirit of God and when we are being led by his spirit, we hear other voices as well. Mm. But you got to silence those voices and tune in to the voice of God. I think sometimes that can be the a mist that we are experiencing too. You start off following the voice of the Holy Spirit, the voice of God. And doing what you're supposed to be doing. You dwell in a secret place, but then you come out to go do life or mm -hmm. to, you know, do certain things. And then all of a sudden you find yourself operating in another voice or listening to another voice. And then you have to make sure that you align yourself and stay in the secret. You can stay in the secret place and not come out by doing what you're saying, by continuously leading or submitting yourself to the unction. Yeah, you do it diligently. You allow the Holy Spirit to pray for you diligently, consistently. You become more and more in tune with his leading rather than the many voices that are in the world who 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 come to influence us away or out of the promises and the will of God. OK, and you become more sensitive to that is called discerning. You become more discerning of voices. And that's something else the Holy Spirit had me to do. Listen, we need to make sure that we pray and listen and that we listen to those who pray and listen. And once you start praying and listening to the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to know people that are praying and listening. You will be able to recognize carnal voices you will be able to recognize voices that come from the enemy to distract you, to discourage you, to cause you to lose hope, to cause you to get out of the will of God. But you first must first engage yourself in praying and listening. And then you'll be able to recognize those who pray and listen. And those are the people that you are to listen to. Okay, he knows we're in this world, but not of this world, but you got to learn how to live in this world, but not allow this world to cause you to conform to it. That's what the Apostle Paul's talking about in Romans 12 and 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, so you can show this which is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. Well, this is how you do it, by the renewing of your mind, by praying in the Holy Spirit. By the renewing of your mind and by praying in the Holy Spirit. How do I renew my mind? By reading my word daily. By praying in the Holy Spirit. Okay. I had someone and I was in a class via Zoom down in Florida. And a lady was talking about her husband knew the Bible backward and forward. He could quote scripture. He knew everything was and all that. But yet. He he mishandled her. He 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 wasn't applying the word. I said, "Well, did he have the Holy Ghost?" Just because someone knows the Bible doesn't mean that they understand it and they can apply it to their life. The Holy Spirit is the one that allows us to apply the word. The letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. That's why we have to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. That's why sometimes when you're praying and you're praying amiss, you know what the what the promise is. 
You even quoting the scripture. You even praying the scripture. But you hadn't allowed it to be in the incubator of the Holy Spirit to where revelation knowledge comes and life has come to that scripture. And sometimes you can hear it in people. They'll be praying scriptures and it'd be so dry. Hmm? It's like just what they've memorized. Do you hear me? The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Fervency. It becomes fervent when the Holy Spirit has revealed that and it's become life to you. Now it's like when you're saying it, you're creating that thing. Hmm? Your words become creative now. Hallelujah. Come on, Stephanie. I ain't talking about being loud. I ain't talking about being loud. Loud ain't got nothing to do with it. I'm talking about fervency. Come on, Stephanie. All right, Bishop. You said let it get in the incubator. Yeah. Okay. Now, how how would practically how how, how I do that? That's praying in the Holy Spirit. That's the incubator. Okay. Praying in tongues. Okay. Okay. Praying in the Spirit. He takes and he enlightens your understanding. Uh, you'll be praying in the Holy Spirit, and all of a sudden. Stuff just start popping up to you to where you got to get a pen and start writing stuff down, just writing stuff down, writing stuff down, because now the scriptures are coming live to you. Now you see how to apply that word to a real life situation to produce the life that Jesus died for us to have. So in other words, these scriptures come alive to you. They become so practical to you. Okay. That's what that incubator does. You know what an incubator does for a baby? The baby there, but it needs to, to grow. His organs hadn't, hadn't really, you know, uh, uh, formed fully and properly yet. And, and so they put them in that incubator. And while they're in that incubator, it gives them time in an environment. Come on now, that's safe in an environment that's going to cause those organs and everything to start growing as they should. And it's a safe place. Somebody say praying in the Holy Spirit is a safe place. See, sometimes you talking to people, they ain't safe because they don't have no word in them either. They ain't safe. If you took that thing in, in the place of the Holy Ghost, come on out, praying in the spirit, man. You can come out strengthened. You can come out with your understanding, enlightened. Are we good? See, what we got to do is we got to take our worship vertical. When we take our worship vertical, praying in the Holy Spirit is taking your worship vertical. Are you hearing me? Praying in the Holy Spirit is taking your worship vertical. That's joining in the conversation that's going on in heaven and leaving all these conversations that are going on in the earth. Even if it's in your own head. Even if it's in your own heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth also speaks. But if you take your worship vertical... Come on, the Holy Spirit can root out and root up and get rid of strongholds. Come on, our stinking thinking, wrong understanding, all of that stuff. I, I, Y'all got me? But you got to take your worship vertical. Praying in the Holy Ghost is taking your worship vertical. Come on, y'all better talk to me. You praying, but you're praying amiss because you hadn't taken your worship vertical. You're praying out of what you see. That's still horizontal. You get vertical. What happens is what you see really isn't what it is. So you're praying about what you see. You're praying about how you feel. 
It has nothing to do with how you feel. It has nothing to do with how you see. That's literally what walking by faith and not by sight looks like. Hmm? To where you have risen above because you're taking your worship vertical to where what you see don't matter. So now you speak to what you see rather than being affected by what you see. Now you speak to how you feel rather than being affected on how you feel. Now your focus ain't on how you feel because your focus determines your feeling. My focus on going vertical. Because I know up there. Come on now. I can understand why I feel this way. And I'm about to get out of my soulless realm. So I'm about to get out of my soulless realm. See, we're accustomed to this soulless realm. We're familiar with it. That's why we'll embrace hurt rather than healing. Being hurt like a whole movement. And, and God said back and said, nah, I sent my son. He didn't send the comforter. And I hadn't told you I heal every place you hurt. Y'all even sing songs and wrote songs about me and everything. And then y'all sitting around talking about you hurt. Which one is going to be? You healed or you hurt? Which one are you going to be? Am I Jehovah Rapha or am I not? I sent my son to heal the broken hearted and the wounded. Coming out of the bruised. Which, which one are you now? Which, what you going to be? What you going to be? You know a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. But if you took your worship vertical, the Holy Ghost said, you stop saying that. Don't you say that no more because you have what you say. Don't you say you heard another day. That's vertical worship. See, if you're staying horizontal, you got enough people that don't go vertical. You can join the Hurt Club. Y'all talk to me now. Mother Irma, you had your mic on. Come on. I probably forgot everything I was going to say two different times, but however, you are teaching excellent tonight. This is good. That's why you don't hear everybody chiming in. We're listening. This is good word tonight and just enjoying it to pieces. So I'm I'm in there and every time I get ready to say something, you're kind of going on in on that road. So I just stay back. But however, thank you. You're doing an excellent job tonight. I'm loving it. Loving well, it. Loving to God be the glory. Yes. To God be the glory. We got to take our worship vertical. Praying in the spirit takes your worship vertical. Let me tell you something. Worship is believing in God's ability to be God. If you don't believe in God's ability to be God, you won't go vertical with your worship. You are comfortable with staying in this horizontal plane. Well, if you believe in God's ability to be God, you'll, you, 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 you'll go vertical. Hmm? You'll go vertical. You'll be like that pilot. We can't stay here. This too, this too rough here. It's too rough. Come on, this ain't good on the plane. This ain't good on you as a passenger. We're going to have to rise to 42,000 feet where the atmosphere is clear. Come on, where there's no turbulence up there. You got to take your worship vertical. How do I take my worship vertical? Until you pray through to your breakthrough. Till you know that the atmosphere clear up here. I don't forget what I forgot what 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 is going on. What 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 was what that? What 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 what? 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 Stephanie be like, what? What 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 did I? What did I? Oh. I know what what my hand raised, Bishop. I don't hurt no more. I don't I don't. She come out with a whole nother revelation. You come out preaching, Jack. <laughs> come on, Stephanie. 
bitch. I'm telling you, listen, and li you it, it, it go over your head, or you just don't hear it. It just like it roll off your back, and yeah. people like, girl, you didn't hear what they said, or you didn't see that, or you didn't get that. I'd be like, what? 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 You I, I mean, it missed me. I'm in another atmosphere. Come on, I'm not checking for that no more. Mm -mm. It don't even. It don't. It just. God, I'm telling you, I've experienced that, and I thank you, Lord, for it. I and listen, even the enemy, the enemy say stuff to you, man. You don't even pay him no attention no more. You don't be saying about I rebuke you. Say I rebuke you. He already rebuked. He defeated. You, you don't even. <laughs> you like what was that? No. Oh. That was just you. <laughs> Lying again. <laughs> huh? So you gotta you gotta take your worship vertical. Okay. That's what praying in the Holy Spirit does for you. You may pray and he may utter and groan and some things that you don't understand, and that's a good thing. He's only going to pray according to the will of God. Somebody say that's a good thing. Okay. And so when we take our worship vertical, we, we deal with the things horizontally at a whole nother, we move different. We move different. Okay. We get answers. Listen, it's about that time. Any questions or comments or something that stuck out to you tonight? But remember, let, let's let's do the prayer. Uh, let's do this before before we I, I forget to do it. The prayer in the book on page 44 says, Father, in the name of Jesus, help me remember to lean on you, acknowledging you in my prayer closet. When I am frustrated, help me get out of my head and into your heart giving voice to your utterance so you can help me see your will come to pass in my life. Pray that prayer over you. Take your worship vertical. Okay? And listen, you can do this all day, every day. Don't ever allow yourself to be overwhelmed or intimidated, frustrated. Okay, anything. I don't care if your body comes on attack. Pray in the spirit. Take take your spirit to a place to where you can speak to the body. Don't let your body run you. You are a spirit that's housing a body that has a soul. Don't let your soul run you. Your mind, your own mind. Let that mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Your will. Your emotions. Okay. Who's that had to hand up? Barbara. Uh, yes, sir. I, I wanted to make a comment. I, I, I'm guilty of many uh, days. My body hurts so bad. I can't do this. Can't do that. I'm guilty of that. I have. I've done that. But I'm learning. Like today, it was cloudy and rainy. I said, "Oh, you're not going to defeat me today." And I started praying in the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. doing utterances that I didn't understand, and I thought I was being silly. So I stopped it. But I, mm. won't yeah, I won't do that again. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I just wanted to put that comment out there. I'm, I'm guilty of that. I, I, you know, I'm yes. you, but I, I'm guilty of it. That's good. Now, listen, thank you for your transparency. When we discover those things, what we need to do is just repent. Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, God. I, I didn't trust you. I didn't fully understand, but I understand now. So, Lord, please forgive me. And then you continue and you go on. Okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. You go on. We don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. We don't want to quench the Holy Spirit. Yes, Stephanie? I got, <clears throat> you know, when God asks you, like, in my relationship with him, he's asked me before, do you trust me? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -mm. I kind of feel like I, I went through that season and I know what that meant. But now the question is, can I trust you? Like, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Can he trust you? Mm -hmm. That you won't be ashamed of this gospel? 
and that irregardless of what you see, feel, or or what comes against you, whether it be persecution or whatever, you won't uh, you won't say like Peter said, I don't know him. I I ain't with him. That you're going to stand steadfast and be unmovable and stand boldly for him. That's what he says. Can I trust you? Can I trust you with revelation? Peter had to be trusted with the revelation that Jesus was the Christ, the son of the living God. He could never go back again to who he was. Okay. So that's what that means to me. Can I trust you? And that's an awesome thing for God to say that to you. Because it means that he has something he wants to deposit in you. And that he has an assignment for you. Okay, anybody else? This is exciting to me. Vertical worship. How do I get there? I ain't no singer. I ain't no musician. Worship ain't a, I, I, worship isn't about music. It's about you believing in God's ability to be God. It's your attitude towards God. Nobody else? We're good? Let's give the Lord a hand of praise and thank him tonight. Thank you for helping us, God. Thank you for making us wiser, stronger. Hallelujah. Teaching us practical things on how to rise above, how to overcome, how to be strengthened in our inner man, how to teach others, God. Hallelujah. I want to challenge you. I hear the Holy Spirit. I want to challenge you. Amen. To people around you to really be in asking people, have you been, have you received since you believe? Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? Okay. Those that have, how often do you pray in tongues? How often do you pray in the spirit? Do you know that it's a part of our worship? Do you know that's how we get the victory over things? Because you got a lot of frustrated Christians, y'all. I'm just telling you the truth. That's why they lukewarm. They don't evangelize. Remember we talked about that last week. If you're not evangelizing, you lukewarm. Oh, my. Ooh. Do y'all believe that we have a lot of frustrated Christians? Okay. Listen, that's not that's not that's not a bad thing. It's just saying that we got a lot of teaching to do. We got to be examples. That encourages my heart. Because we're not hopeless. There's a solution. We just can't be ashamed of the gospel. That's all. And listen, your capacity to love has to increase. We got to love them enough to tell them the truth. Don't let the enemy lie to them anymore. Don't let them be deceived anymore. Okay. Don't let them not believe that uh, God is who he say he is and can do everything he said he can do and that all things are possible with God. Don't let them don't believe anymore that all things are working together for their good. They just got to raise. They got to they got to take their worship uh, vertical so they can see it's working together for their good. They got to they got to comprehend the depth, the width, the height, amen, of his love so they can begin experiencing the fullness of God. And it's in vertical worship where you begin comprehending his love. Okay. 
Hallelujah. So, Father, we just thank you for that tonight. I praise you for all of your beautiful people all over the world, those that will hear this in the future, God, those that have heard it tonight. I plead the blood of Jesus over what you shared with us. I thank you. We've grown. Our capacity has increased. God, we're able to teach, to teach, to teach, and we're going to make a difference. We've come to know you, and we're going to make it known everywhere we go and everything that we do. Thank you that lives are being transformed all around us. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, God, you can trust us with your people. You can trust us with your will, what you want to do, God, uh, what you desire to see happening uh, in this 21st century. So we appreciate you so much for choosing us. And Father, now as I'm, I'm before you, I pray for the seeds that are going to be sown tonight. I pray for the tithes that are going to be returned unto you as an act of worship, Lord God. We believe you are Jehovah Jireh. We believe that you have provided for us, God, and we trust you with our life. We trust you for caring for us and making sure we have everything that we need. For you supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So God, I pray your blessing on us every seed sown tonight. God, let it uh, increase our wisdom, let it cause us to lack nothing. God, let us even be positioned to leave an inheritance for our children's children. God, the revelation, Abraham taught Isaac, Isaac taught Jacob, God, the principle of the tithe, the principle of giving. And there's a promise in your word that says that as long as the earth remain, there will be seed time and harvest. So we bless you for that, God. This principle will never go away. God, that is a wealthy place for us. So we appreciate you so much, oh God. We pray your blessing multiplied a hundred times upon the lives of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands for that. Say, Lord, I receive my harvest. I receive my increase. I receive all the provision for my life and for my children and my children's children, God. Thank you for the principle of the tithe. Thank you, God, for the principle of sowing and reaping. You have given us our economy system that's above the kingdom of economy of this world. So we bless you for it, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. So listen, I uh, want to encourage you. Turn the Lord's tithe tonight. Give up your offerings. Amen. Let's be consistent with that so that we can uh, stay on the increase and, and expand and enlarge our territory. Amen. City to city, state to state, nation to nation. Um, Going to be in a meeting in the morning uh, with the team in Kenya. The maternity ward is going up, it's going up. The foundation, the floor foundation is being poured right now. Pictures will be coming forth. Um, and so many powerful things are happening. Uh, the trip to Jamaica was powerful. There's a um, um, Elijah, uh, Elisha principles coming out of that. Uh, succession programs coming up. Trip to Togo, Togo was powerful. Amen. Um, so just thank God for you. You all, we are are, are moving forward. Uh, you guys are going to see some things going on in Tupelo more. So, and uh, it's time for you guys just to, to step on up. So let's get it. But we got to get positioned. We got to get consistent. We got to be diligent. Amen. And uh, we got a lot of things to teach and to share. Okay. And you guys got it. It's in there. It's in there. Okay. So thank you all again for your faithfulness. We're not recording anymore. Let me stop that.